Hi, in this video we're going to look at some more of the 2016 maths admissions test um, used for entrance to Oxford primarily, also Imperial, uh, for maths and related subjects. In other videos I've looked at the short answer questions and we've gone through those. They were all multiple choice. Uh, in this one we're going to look at one of the long answer questions. So we'll do the first one here which is question 2, um, which uh, you know, everyone answers this question. So. Uh, we have to be careful here to answer the question and also to set our working out clearly uh, because you know, you're being tested now not just on the answers but also on the clarity and precision uh, of your mathematical arguments. So uh, we'll start and see how it goes. So uh, hopefully you can download this from the website, you may be able to see the questions here as well. Uh, so let a of x equals 2x plus 1 and b of x equal 3x plus 2, so two function definitions. Don't need to waste any time copying those out unless you find it particularly useful. We can just go straight in and answer the question. So part 1, it says show that a of b of x equals b of a of x. So I'm just going to compute those two things, so uh, a of b of x here, that's uh, a of 3x plus 2 and if we put 3, 3x plus 2 in place of x in a that's 2 times 3x plus 2 plus 1 so that gives us 6x plus 4 plus 1 which is 6x plus 5 and if we do it the other way around b of a of x well that's b of 2x plus 1 which is 3 times 2x plus 1 plus 2 so that's again 6x plus 3 plus 2, which is 6x plus 5. So we have uh, that a of b of x is equal to b of a of x. Okay, so easy mark at the start. Notice they don't actually tell you how many marks are in each part of the question here. You can see them in the mark schemes um, you know, if you're interested. But in the real exam, you just have to work through and do as much as you can. Only one mark out of the uh, 15, I think it is available. Uh, is that right? 4, 8, 11, yeah, 15 available for the question um, yeah, for that part. So yeah, this is either going to be just to warm you up into the question to make sure you understand the definitions or perhaps that result will be useful to us later on. We'll see. So that was part i. Okay, part ii. It says let n be a positive integer. Determine a to the n of x, where that means apply the function n times. So it's not the same thing as, you know, a of x all to the power of n, which would mean do 2x plus 1 all to the power of n. We're just applying the function over and over again. Um, and it says put your answer in the, uh, in the, in the simplest form uh, possible. So I suppose we just uh, start uh, playing around with it until we, until we get the idea. So we know that, you know, a of x equals 2x plus 1, and then... Well, this uh, a2 of x, that would be a of a of x, that's 2 times 2x plus 1 plus 1, so that gives us 4x plus 3, and then a cubed of x, that's a of a of, a of x, or a of uh, a squared of x, so I get 2 times 4x plus 3 plus 1, which is uh, 8x plus 7, and Let's do one more, a to the a4 of x would be a of a cubed of x, that's 2 times 8x plus 7 plus 1, uh, so that gives us 16x uh, plus 15. At this point we should um, <clears throat> be able to, to spot what's going on and to try and work out what uh, a n of x is in general. So firstly, you know, we look at these first terms, let me write a of x out again here, so we've got the whole sequence, 2x plus 1, so uh, the coefficient of x we can see is doubling, and, and it's fairly clear why that's happening each time, you know, a does 2 times the previous function, then plus 1, um, so we have uh, the, 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 the sequence, uh, you know, in increasing there, so we have um, 2 to the n, times x, we should be able to just write that up down without too much thought for the uh, geometric increasing sequence of uh, just powers of 2. And if we look at the constant terms, well, we've got 1, 3, 7, 15. Well, actually, these are all just 1 less than the uh, than the x terms. 
and you know again we can kind of convince ourselves that, that that's always going to be true I've always got um, two times the previous term plus one uh, that's always going to lead us to two to the n uh, minus one you don't need to be super rigorous uh, with these sorts of patterns if you can convince yourself that it's true uh, and spot the pattern and get the answer right then uh, here that's enough it just says determine the form of a n of x in the simplest form possible so there we go we've got the answer let's move on to part three so that was only uh well oh, that was three marks actually so we've got four out of 15 marks for this question um now it says a function f of x equals 108x plus c is produced by repeatedly applying the functions a of x and b of x in some order. Uh, how many different orders can a and b be applied to produce f? Well, again, having looked at question two here, we can see that you know every time we uh, apply a, it multiplies the x term by two. Right now, imagine if I took one of these things like uh, you know b of a cubed of x, right? So I take a cubed of x and then I apply b. Well, b would be 3 times uh, x plus 2, so I would do 3 times 8x plus 7 plus 2, that would give me 24x plus 23, right? So applying b multiplies the x term by 3, applying a multiplies it by 2, right? So if my target is 108x plus c, okay, I just got to think about, well, how can I get to 108 by doubling and tripling? And if we look at the prime factorization of 108, okay, so uh, you know you can split this up as, as much as you like. So 108. Um, so let's try and pick a reasonably efficient way of doing this. What is it? Nine times 12, which is three times three, and then 12 is two times two times three. So I think uh, 108 uh, here is <laughs> um, two squared times 3 cubed, okay, so I probably wouldn't actually write this stuff out in my answer, by the way, I'm just doing that for the explanation, so I'd say 108 is 2 squared times 3 cubed, so, you know, we need to apply uh, the function a 2 times and b 3 times, and if we do that in any order, uh, then that would give us something that would work, so it could be a, a, b, b, b of x, it could be b, b, a, b, a of x. So it's just got to be some application uh, of three b's and two a's. So how many orders? Um, well, so it's essentially saying how many ways do I write down five letters, you know, three of which are the same. So essentially you can think of this as saying I've got five positions and in two of those positions I need to choose to put the two a's. So uh, so the answer here is 5 choose 2, or you could say how many places to put the b's, it's the same, it's the same thing as you know, 5 choose 3, you should know from uh, A level uh, these coefficients when you do binomial expansions, the same thing as 5 factorial over 2 factorial times 3 factorial, uh, so 5 factorial over 3 factorial is 5 times 4, and then divided by 2, so this just gives us 10. Okay. So the answer is that there are 10 different ways of uh, ordering the functions a and b to produce a function that's uh, got 108x plus some constant. Right, part four. Um, uh, part three was four marks, so we're you know just over halfway through this question now um, in terms of the number of marks. Uh, what are the possible values of c uh, justify your answer? Okay, so, well... Uh, so we've got this thing then, f of x is 108x plus c, and obviously I could have applied these a's and b's in different orders, and maybe I would get a different answer. But this is when we think back to part one, and think, okay, you know, if, when you ask an easy result, you should always keep it in mind in case it's something that's going to turn out to be useful uh, later on. So we showed earlier that a of b of x is the same thing as uh, b of a of x, right? So, you know, uh, so a b of x is the same thing as b of uh, a of x. 
So actually what that means here is, you know, like, like if I have a, a, b, b, b of x, you know, if I switch the order of an a and a b here, that's going to be the same as like a, b, a, b, b. So I do b of b of b of a of a of x. So I'm going to apply b three times to a of a of x. Now a of a of x was 4x plus 3. So I want to do 4x plus 3, then apply b to that, uh, which is 3 times that plus 2. Apply b again, so 3 times that plus 2. And apply b of that again, and get 3 times that plus 2. Uh, oh, and I've gone off the page as well, that's a bit annoying. Sorry about that. Uh, anyway, it's all here. Uh, you can pause and have a look at what I was writing out there. I was just working out all of the different functions. Uh, C equals 107 is the uh, is the only possibility. So the last part, um, are there any positive integers m1 up to mk and n1 up to nk such that when I apply uh, these combinations of functions I get 214x plus 92? Um, well, there are lots of ways. There are, there are lots of ways to answer this question. I think um, that there are. Uh, easier ways and hard ways. This is clearly something that you need to stop and think about for a while. You're not going to just <coughs> uh, come up with the answer immediately. But let's think about what all, each of these sort of terms look like. So I've got, I've got sort of some combination of a's and some and b's, and then I add it to some other combination of a's and b's, some other combination of a's and b's, um, and I, I want to see if I can get this as a, as a final answer. Um, now. They have to be positive integers, so you know there has to be at least one a in here and at least one b in here. Uh, so what can I say about these functions? Well, the term that goes with x with these functions, because uh, they've had so it's, it's going to have a to the m1, b to the n1. It's definitely going to have a two to the power of m1, three to the power of n1 in front of it, right? So there's going to be some power of two, some power of three multiplied by x. And that's going to be true for for all of these, right? Um, and there's you know plus plus some constant. Let's call it c1 here, and the same for this one. You know, two to the m2, three to the n2, plus some other constant all the way up to the end here. A to the mk, b to the nk. So that'll be uh, again two to the mk, three to the nk, plus um, ck. This has to be 214x plus 92. So I have to find some contradiction here, either to show that these constants can't add up to 92 for some reason, or that the uh, the, the powers, um, uh, it, you know, these numbers in front of the x don't add up to 214. And possibly the quickest way to do this is to notice that all of these powers, because they're they've got two, at least a two times a three in them, you know, have to be multiples of 6 so this is a, so this number here is a multiple of 6 this number here is a multiple of 6 this number here is a multiple of 6 okay or oh, they should all have x's in by them sorry about that um so you know this is the coefficient of x for each term they're all multiples of 6 so this one must be like you know 6 times some number times x this one must be 6 times some other number times x right plus these constants Okay, this is six times some number times x. Okay, so actually the x terms must be six times when you put them all together must be six times a times x, right? So that would have to be two hundred and fourteen times x. But if I try to do six two hundred and fourteen divided by six, um, this doesn't work. Okay, I don't get a whole number, so I get uh, six into thirty four here. I get thirty five. Uh, remainder four, uh, which is a contradiction then, because I can't find uh, I can't find these numbers that would have to be whole numbers uh, that are multiples of six that would all add together to give something that's not a multiple of six. So you could certainly make that argument. Um, so uh, so that's one way of doing it. There are other ways as well. But we only need to find one way. Um, so there we go. A uh, long answer question in the map paper is, you know, clearly uh, challenging. But you know, it does. Have, they, they do have easier parts at the beginning, 
and the last part is generally going to be quite challenging. So I think if I was sitting this paper, I would have a go at trying to answer every part of the question whilst it's in my head. But you know, I'd hope to get through the first few parts at least. I would perhaps expect to have a go at the second question and maybe come back to the very final part if I've got time because that one may need a bit of thought and a bit of embedding of the ideas and a bit of problem solving. One of the interesting things in, in math, math, mathematical thinking is that actually even when you're not engaged in a problem, uh, studies have shown that you, you know, your brain is still engaged in it in, in, in some sense. So you know, if you've read through it, uh, you've had a go, you've thought about it, um, you may suddenly find, you may have had this experience, you suddenly find actually as you're doing another problem, the answer to this one uh, kind of uh, springs into your mind or, or, or an idea for it even though you're not kind of actively thinking about it. So, so do leave it alone. Um, you know, sometimes you need a little bit of time to process the problems carefully before you can really solve them. Okay, so there we go. Um, that was question two uh, of this paper. I don't know if I'll get any more out before the real exam for, for 2017, but we'll see how it goes. I know it's only a couple of days away now if you're watching these as I'm uploading them. So good luck with the exam if you're taking it. Um, and I will upload some more in the future.